I've been making a series of three videos about creating glass paneled cabinet doors because many woodworkers find them intimidating. But if I can help you walk through the process, you'll have a new set of skills to add to your arsenal and new possibilities for future cabinet and furniture projects. In the last video, we made simple single panel glass doors. Next time, we'll discuss how to select and cut glass for your projects. I'll link to those videos below as they become available. Today, we'll make a slightly more complex door with multiple glass panels divided by muntins. First, let's clear up some of the terminology I'll be using in this video. A cabinet door frame is made up of two horizontal rails on the top and the bottom, and two vertical styles. If that door will be divided into smaller panels, these dividers are called muntins. This is not the same as a mullion, which would divide two separate windows. If these terms are different in your country, that's fine, but that's how we're going to use them here. In the old days, when large pieces of glass were expensive and difficult to transport without breaking, a window or a door may have been divided into smaller panels for practical reasons. Nowadays, they may be done for a decorative appearance, and as such, decorative profiles are usually routed both into the edges of the frame and into the muntins themselves. They make special router bit sets for this type of glass panel construction. But the same thing may be done with a simple cope and stick bit set that is commonly used for just regular cabinet doors. The first step is making the outer frame. We have a whole video about using a cope and stick router bit set to make a door frame. Rather than repeating all of that here, I'll just place a link to that video in the description below this one and encourage you to check it out. That'll allow us to concentrate on the most unique part of this process, creating these inner muntins. The muntins are made with the same bit set, using the same setups that you use to create the frame. Cabinet door bit sets cut two different profiles. You have one that becomes the inner edge of the frame, that's called the sticking profile, and you have an opposite or mirror image that is cut on the ends of your rails so they will make together. That's called the coping profile. We'll use those same profiles on the muntins. It's useful if you can plan ahead to make all of your sticking cuts at the same time, including on the edges of your styles and on the edges of your muntins. Then make all of your coping cuts at the same time, including the ends of the two rails and the ends of all of your muntins. But that's not always possible. So save a scrap of material with each profile you cut into it. You may use that then to reset your bit height if you have to swap bits back and forth mid-project, which is pretty likely to happen. Another thing to be mindful of is how dangerous it can be to route to the edge of a very narrow workpiece without some sort of device to keep it stable throughout the cut and to keep your fingers safe. Normally, you can route the edge of a wider board, then rip the narrow strip off the board on the table saw. But in this case, you have to use the sticking bit to route both sides of all of your muntins. Here, a custom push block is made by routing the opposite coping profile into the edge of a scrap of wood and attaching a handle. A small piece is also attached to the heel of the block to hook on the end of the muntin and push it forward. Because the coping profile is a mirror image of the sticking profile that you're going to be routing on the edges of your muntins, the first formed edge of the muntin will mate with the edge of your push block and everything will remain stable as you safely route the second opposite edge of your narrow muntins. As a side note, this particular bit set I'm using in this video clip is designed to create an open rabbit on the back side of the muntin. This saves a step in the construction process, as you'll see later, but it's a difficult set to set up, in my opinion. A standard cope and stick bit set will create grooves along the edges rather than rabbits, but I'll show you how to deal with that later. Before coping the ends of your muntins, they must be cut to length. This is easily done by placing a piece of mutton stock on top of the dry assembled frame's inner profile and marking it with a pencil. Remember that the vertical mutton, the one that's a full length, must be trimmed to span not just the opening in the frame, 
but also the width of the profile on each of the rails. The length of the horizontal muntins must be measured with a ruler from the bottom of the groove in the vertical muntin to the opposite edge of the sticked profile on your style. Take these measurements carefully and trim your pieces accordingly. Next, a coping profile bit is set up in the router table and the fence is set flush with the bit center bearing. This forms the ends of the muntin so they can mate with the inside of the frame and also with each other. Note how a scrap with the opposite sticked profile cut into its edge is used in conjunction with the miter gauge to support and guide the end of the muntin as well as to reduce splintering during these end cuts. Now that you've routed the edges of your muntins with your sticking profile and the ends of your muntins with your coping profile, assembly is simple. But how do you get the glass in the frame? Well, you didn't want to put the glass in the grooves before you assembled the frame, because if one of those pieces of glass should break, you won't be able to get it out to replace it or get a new one in. Instead, after the glue is dry, flip the frame over and use a rabbiting router bit to eliminate the groove in the back and create a rabbit into which you can drop your glass panels. A chisel, of course, may be used to square the rounded corners. The glass may be held in these rabbits with glazer's points, as we did with our simple glass door panel. Or for a more finished look, you may cut and nail some strips of wood around each pane of glass to hold it in. Don't glue it in, because you want to be able to pry those strips out later should you have to replace a broken panel. Divided glass doors can look difficult to build, but they really aren't. I hope this video, along with the others that I'll link to below, give you the confidence to try them yourselves. See you next time. If you sharpen your tools by hand, do yourself a favor. Try one of Trend's diamond stones. You can start with a card, but before long, you'll want a full bend stone because these things cut fast, they stay perfectly flat, and you can go from stone to strop to wood and be back to work in under a minute. I'll link to my favorites in the notes below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.